We are all connected. Honor the legacy of the Unitarians and Universalists who came before us. A legacy built on the belief that we are part of an interconnected web bound not just to each other, but to the cosmos and all forms of life. Universalists spoke of a love that could never let us go, envisioning a world in which all were saved in the embrace of divine love. Unitarians taught of the oneness of God and the oneness of humanity, emphasizing the deep inherent worth of every person. When these two traditions merged into Unitarian Universalism, our movement continued to proclaim the sacredness of connection, connection between people, communities, and the natural world. From William Ellery Channing, Unitarian. The great end in religious instruction is not to stamp our minds upon the young, but to stir up their own, not to make them see with our eyes, but to look inquiringly and steadily with their own. This echoes the call to engage deeply with our faith, fostering connections not by molding others to our beliefs, but by nurturing open inquiry and connection to self, community, and the divine. From James Luther Adams, Unitarian theologian. The free church is the community of the free, whose unity is not based on authority, but on a common covenant. Adams emphasizes that the strength of our faith lies in the voluntary connection we create through our covenant, highlighting the importance of active participation and mutual responsibility. We're going to have a short discussion. We left time for it. How many of you here or on Zoom are leading a team or a committee here at UUFBR, or if you're a board member. Raise your hand, please. Uh, which team are you leading? I am doing the cluster, the Southeast cluster. Thank you. Sandy? The endowment committee. I'm chair of the endowment committee. Rick? I'm a member of the Board of Trustees. Share X. John Tilton. Betty? Share X. Um, Jennifer Ligetti, Healing Justice and Share the Plate. A few up here. Sharon Drew, membership, which includes greeting and following up visitors and outreach and a number of other things. Including the care, that's a new group. So the, the, this committee was so great, it spawned a new one. <laughs> Thank you. Celia Hirsch, landscape committee. I missed a few. Can you raise your hands? Okay, thank you. Hi, Nancy Hutter and uh, personnel, as well as co-lead for stewardship development. Thank you, Nancy. Howard Prentice, member of the Board of Trustees. Uh, Linda Prentice, uh, stewardship and program planning. Patrick Larson, I'm the vice president of the board and in charge of the uh, facilities, buildings, and grounds. Hi, I'm Rajiv Arora. I'm the, one of the co-presidents of the board of trustees. I'm Ron Roth. I'm, I think we have a few leaders, team leaders for worship, but I'm um, 
worship team leader. I'm going to ask a couple of you, because we can't hear from all of you, but what's it like? And then what do you think UUFBR needs most? If anyone want to just volunteer, raise your hand, I'll give you the mic for a minute. Oh, one sec. We have a few that I think are announced on Zoom that I forgot to ask. Thank you, Danielle. Okay, sorry about that. Um, let's see, we have uh, Allison Rognes. Um, she is the chair of the Pagan Study Group and uh, also on the worship team and space planning committee. And we also wanted to let everyone know that um, a card was sent uh, on behalf of UFFBR uh, to Ellen Cormier um, from the care team. And Marilyn Fakowski will also be attending the funeral. So the question was, what's it like? What do you think we need most? And I think Linda raised her hand. Um, I think it's a bit daunting to even thinking, uh, to even start thinking about getting involved in anything because you know, the sum of the parts are, are always sort of, everything's going on, how does it all come together? Um, but I think when we all help, a bit like what we just listened to with the stone soup, everyone puts in a little bit, no matter how big or small, it makes such a difference. And I think it just enriches um, our community as, as we go forward um, to the future and gives us a legacy for the future. So I was a bit worried about getting involved, how much time it would take, but you know what, it's a lot of fun, and you're with a lot of fun and interesting people, and you learn so much. So that's my take on it. Thank you, Linda. Betty Tilton? Thank you. ShareX, John and I have been doing it for about, ShareX, John and I have been doing it for about seven years, a program started by Reverend Harris Reardon. It's rewarding. Sorry, am I back to some of you? It's rewarding, and in particular, we're very proud that we have seven AA groups here. In fact, in Palm Beach County, there, there's a program called Intergroup. It's all of the AA groups in Palm, Southeast Palm Beach County. They're going to have an event here called Intergroup. So this, it's very rewarding, and anybody wants to help? And we contribute to the, um, the monies. We rent space here for you that don't know. Uh, it goes to our operating budget. Thank you. Right, I was going to explain what ShareX is. They, they take all the rooms and spaces we have and schedule folks to use it. And then some of those groups contribute. I don't think we charge. We charge everybody, including AA. <laughs> That's why they take dues. I, I need yes. Well, no, no, it's... The AA group, we charge everyone. It's rental space. And the AA groups, it's reduced, as it was started by Reverend Harris. Thank you for helping clarify that. Yes. Sandy Troiano? Um, I should add that I'm also co-chair of the Minister Search Committee. In these positions I have, it's challenging it's a deep sense of responsibility. At times I want to pull my hair out and say, why did I ever agree to any of this? But it's also rewarding in the sense that, it, you know, I keep doing it because it's important. You feel like you're a part of something. You work with good people and you feel like you actually have some influence on what happens here and that you're a part of trying to make this place a good place. So I think it's to the extent people want to get involved, it's also a great way to get to know people. I'll take Rick and that'll be the last one. Thank you, Rick. Um, we're also um, involved with the uh, peace um, and that connects our church um, with the community. East is an is an active group where we try and tackle. I'm sorry, we try and tackle problems of um, the community um, at large, Palm Beach County. Thank you, Rick. 
a lot of you alluded to things we do here, but also outside of the community. And because we're stewards of Unitarian Universalism itself as well, I want you to consider this, but don't share your answer. How might we deepen our commitment to our living principles? Not only within these walls, but in the larger world. Just think about it for a moment. Now tell me, how do we embody this interconnectedness? Anyone care to share an answer? Diane? I guess the thing that I see is that we help support each other and many of us go out into the larger world out there and do good deeds. So if we can support each other to keep going, that's good enough. Um, the peace, well, the peace group has been involved with other churches in Palm Beach County. Um, many people here more involved doing things on their own with them, uh, supporting changes in the community, such as getting people IDs who didn't have access to IDs. <laughs> Anybody else? Thank you. Alexis, by the way, thank you for reading our story this morning. So I think actually dialectics are really, really, really helpful, right? So the idea that you can have like a conversation with anyone about anything and the idea of going ahead and honing into like that, that idea, the, the core idea that they're really trying to communicate and seeing if it's, uh, if it's fair, if it's good, if it's just, if it's really representative of what we believe in. Um, and if it's not kind of like gently guiding the conversation towards what it is, and if it is, then just kind of like acting out the energy that's involved in that idea, right? Just reinforcing within the world, within the universe, um, the truth that we all kind of share, right? Thank you, Alexis. Dialectics, I haven't heard that since philosophy class in seminary, <laughs> yes. Jennifer Ligetti. I just want to say that for me, a highlight of the last year was the, our participation in Palm Beach Pride. Uh, that was last March, and we'll, we're planning to participate again this year. And that was honestly a suggestion from Eric, who is not Eric Landstrom, who's not a part of Healing Justice, but he said, y'all, we should really do this as a congregation. And so Healing Justice got on board with that. And, and it was just, it was the beginning for me of some new friendships and just also a really feel good experience. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, I didn't, we didn't do this discussion to pat ourselves on the back because I don't think we, I think we do support each other and cheer each other on just fine. What we're talking about is, what is the heart of stewardship, right? I wanna ask the rest of the community um, who hasn't had a chance or has been not yet volunteering, just, and do not feel afraid because everyone really wants to know these answers. What are the biggest obstacles to volunteering in a community? Just give us the typical ones. You volunteer to do one thing, you get 10 things. <laughs> so there's fear of being dumped on. That's what I'll call it. Anyone else? Your name? Hi, Peter Penner. Uh, time commitment. Uh, the unending time involved in volunteering and donating your time. 
There's only so many beans, as Courtney likes to call it. You have so many beans to pass out. I would say two things. One is just the overwhelm of life, work, and managing everything. But the other is also volunteering for other organizations. And so it's how much time do you really have to commit? Howard Prentice? Um, I, would, I would say for some people, I've certainly heard that they, th they think it's going to be received as a sort of in being involved in an inclusive environment, but then they don't feel so included. So it's just a question, really. Um, but uh, I don't think it's just my imagination. I think people, I do, do hear people say that. Rick? For some folks who may be a little, um, a little shy, uh, it may be a, a risk for them to open up. Yes, there are a lot of, a lot of obstacles. Um, I want you to reflect on uh, your own life. What makes it difficult to commit to volunteering? Is it some of the things we mentioned? Time, energy, uncertainty about how to help, or is it something else? How might we, as a congregation, support one another to overcome these obstacles and create opportunities for meaningful service. Linda Prentice. I think the important thing is that you need to connect with people. I think part of being in a community as we are right now um, at UUFBR is that we kind of joined this to have be surrounded by people of, you know, like-minded people. And, you know, when you do do volunteering, you do get to know people at a deeper level. You do get to form friendships. You do get to establish relationships. I mean, I'm just thinking of my own life with my husband here, Howard. Uh, we started volunteering at University of Aberdeen in Scotland with the Cyrenian Night Shelter when we were 17 years old. And that was how many years ago? 47 years ago or something. <laughs> But the thing was, we weren't, you know, romantically involved. We wanted to get to know each other and at a deeper level and, and doing things like, you know, making soup for folk on the streets and giving it out and just spending time together. We got to know each other at a deeper level and it, it just uh, opened up a whole realm of possibilities for us. So I think, you know, that's something positive you can get. So you're selling the benefits of it. Yeah. Ro Ro Roman, yeah, you could, you could find your mate. What if I told you that each team leader has prepared, and if not, you better get out a pen and jot it down, a short list of small tasks with some impact that do not require you to, quote, join the team. Would that make a difference? Yes, I'm seeing some nods. Any, anyone else? The, the feeling that we might get sucked in because we have such a beautiful community of volunteers and dedicated people that have really stuck a toe in the water and suddenly found that it went pretty deep, right? Um, we find ourselves doing multiple things on a Sunday. <laughs> or being dragged in to cover when someone is and someone can't make it. Thank you for that, Fritz. I want to conclude with just saying a big, fat, ugly thank you to everybody for what you bring, because being a lay-led community is not easy.
while we are still looking for a minister, we're doing this together. On with our regularly scheduled sermon. (laughs) This is why our seventh principle, respect for the interdependent web of all existence, remains central to our faith. It is both a call to wonder and a challenge to action, to live in ways that honor and preserve this interdependence. Modern scientific research echoes these these spiritual principles. Studies in fields such as neuroscience, psychology, and ecology affirm that our well-being is tied to our relationships with each other and the environment. Neuroscience reveals that our brains are wired for connection. We have mirror neurons that activate not just when we experience emotions, but also when we observe others experiencing them. This capacity for empathy shows that we are neurologically built to understand and share in each other's joys and suffering. Psychology tells us that relationships are the greatest predictors of happiness and health. A strong sense of community and belonging increases our resilience, improves mental health, and even helps us live longer if that's something that you want. Research in neuroscience and psychology increasingly shows that human beings are wired for connection. Studies show that the social bonds improve our mental health, increase longevity, and lead lead us to greater resilience in facing life's challenges. Similarly, research on community volunteerism has found that individuals who engage in meaningful volunteer work feel a greater sense of purpose and connection to others. Ecology teaches us that ecosystems thrive through diversity and interdependence. Much like an ecosystem, Communities flourish when every part contributes to the whole, and each member finds a way to nurture the system. One fascinating study from the University of California, Los Angeles, UCLA, suggests that social connection is so vital that loneliness and social isolation are linked to inflammation, which can impact physical and emotional health. This research aligns with our UU values, emphasizing how connection is not just spiritual, but deeply physical, woven into our very being. Consider, too, the broader impact of your participation, not just as an individual, but as part of a network of care, a community of stewards that embodies connection in action. The image of stewardship draws together the many threads of this web, the earth upon which we live, the elements of community we value, and the institutions that forward our values and provide services we think are important. Stewards are caretakers with a forward vision. They hold something in trust. They ensure that it will be there in the future to the benefit of others. Successful stewards not only protect, but help something to improve and grow. Their actions are empowering. This is true regardless of whether we are stewards of the earth, institutions, people, or our Unitarian Universalism faith. Remember that all our roots are strong when intertwined with those of others. Our branches reach further when they grow together. May we leave today feeling more deeply connected to ourselves, to one another, 
and to our shared Unitarian Universalist faith. Let us hold in our hearts the words of John Murray, one of the founders of Universalism in America. Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. Give them not hell, but hope and courage. So may we all offer hope, courage, and the power of connection to all who seek it.